Thank you, Father. We appreciate this eve of the Sabbath. We love you and we appreciate how you have led us this far, given us this week, and given us this day in our daily bread. Lord, as we was on our knees this morning asking you to lead us through this day and give us our daily bread and forgive us of our sins that we would commit if it weren't for your spirit and the comforter of the Holy Ghost and that born again spirit that keeps us from committing sin. Lord, we know our flesh is flesh. But if that inner man is born again, you say he cannot commit sin because that seed of the Word of God and of Jesus is in us. And we just thank you. And I appreciate you, Lord. And all of the trouble and all that the government is bringing on us. God, I know somehow, Lord, you're going to bring the righteous through. And we know even John said that this evil one rising up out of the Middle East would cause craftiness, sin, and evil to prosper. But it won't last, not even three and a half years. God, we know what's happening in the world is not going to last long. You even once said if you didn't shorten the days that no flesh should be saved. But for the elect... Those days should be shortened. God, we are grateful to you. We are grateful to you that you're going to do something for the elect. The elect of grace. Those that are called and chosen. You said you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you. We just somehow in our hearts Know and believe that the righteous shall scarcely be saved if we will press, strive to enter in the straight gate. Now, Lord, many will try. Many try to get in the ark when the door was shut. You said they will stand outside. They will cry and they will howl and they will weep trying to get in. But you said it's not so. Oh, Jesus, help us to enter into this ark, this holy anointing that you gave Moses that represented our Holy Ghost that you give us. Don't touch that ark. Lord, a man touched it and died and a woman touched it and and miscarried. Father, we know it's a, if the type of the Holy Ghost, what will the real Holy Ghost do? So Lord, we fear before you. We weep and howl before you. We do want you to lead us. We do recognize you as the God of Abraham that appeared to him when he was turning from killing 28 kings and took their wealth and drove the enemy out of the land. Spoke to him as the Almighty. You didn't appear to him as some idol, some star. He was a stargazer. Like a scientist, but you came to him as the Almighty God. And you proved yourself to be the Almighty by giving him a son and his wife, a son, Sarah, in old age. You proved to him. Oh God, even as she deceived him, his wife, to, in his younger age, to take a, a heathen woman and, and take her into his, his, his bed. And she gave him a son, but it wasn't that seed. It wasn't that holy, righteous seed. It wasn't that faith. Lord, but 25 years later, Lord, faith kicked in. Faith kicked in her heart. 
God, I believe right now that faith can kick in right here in these days that we're in to get us through. Lord, I need that faith to kick in. Lord, the burden of our hearts for Africa. God, I know India was a great burden, but Jesus seemed to me in my soul, in my spirit, that, that God, Africa, must be saved. Lord, a remnant. Lord, it, it looked like I saw a hundred million, God, that, that possibly could come in through this gospel. Jesus. And Lord, I don't believe it's going to take long. Lord, you just give us these seven years of tribulation. If you just give us these years, God, to, to evangelize and somehow make a way. You made a way. God, you made a way for all the prophets. You made a way for Moses. And they came out of Egypt with silver. You didn't bring them out broke. You didn't bring them out with nothing to live on. The, the scripture said you brought them out with gold and with silver. There was not one feeble, not even agey. When one feeble person, not an old age in the crowd, Lord, not one feeble person among their tribes, God, and we're called out of that same seed of Abraham. Whoever confesses Jesus Christ in his heart is the seed of Abraham. And God, I come to you. You told me in the beginning as you were with Moses, you'd be with us. God, we ask you today to look in our hearts, look in our souls and search the hearts of us. Everyone in this audience, God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I heard that little voice this morning, and that's my heart, Lord. Oh, gracious God, mighty one of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and God, we come to you, Lord, for these many, many needs, all of these requests. God, if my arm was long enough, I would meet all these needs. But you said, my arm is not short that I cannot d deliver. Am I God that I can't save? Am I God, my arm short that I can't save, deliver? Am I God that I can't deliver? Lord, I recognize you as God that can and will. Please, God. Please, God. Answer the needs. Answer the needs, God. Put your word in here. God, put your word right in here. Son of, son of God, I know you are answer. Lord, I remember a, a man and his wife had a, two sons. They couldn't get saved to go to church. And they put a little request in one morning service. And they was 1,100 miles from those sons. And something happened that evening. Both of those sons, something come to them, Lord, to you, your grace. And they got saved. Thank you, Lord. Lord, a woman that believed, a little widow, had them two wicked sons, believed in that morning service. And, and just before she got home, something like thunder she frightened her sons and they were saved when she got home. So we know you can do it. God, they know difference in you today and you was 40 years ago 50 years ago when all of these things 
Lord, when people walked out, they didn't live to see the morning sometimes because they rejected God. The conviction was so deep. Lord, send that conviction back again. Lord, that conviction ain't in the church like it was. God, as I was just literally about a kid coming up. God, the judgments of God, Lord. Oh, Jesus. People dying, screaming, I'm in hell, I'm in hell. Lord, we've saw it, we've seen it in the revivals. And God, then when it happened, Lord, saw it up yonder in, in Indiana, Jeffersonville, Lord, up there in that, uh, Missouri, saw it up yonder in Indiana. God, when I looked up in that balcony and told that man and his wife, if they didn't get in that altar that night, that the next night they had two kids, them kids would be gone, a house would burn them up. Lord, the next day, Lord, it was, she had her clothes on the line and she was getting them in, and all of a sudden lightning hit that roof and them kids was up there. Them kids burn up in that house. Lord, they was in that service that night, that man and wife, and gave their hearts to God. Lord, you said judgment must begin in those, those days. God, judgment was in the house of God. And I know that's what we need today. It seems like there's no judgment in church no more. God, there's nothing to make people fear. God, you, you come to me and told me that if I didn't go to church that night, and showed me a bed of lake of fire and I was in it. Screaming, you said, that's where you're going. You don't go to church, Lord. I got to church about 9 or 9.30. And the preacher's still preaching and you save me. God, I know you're still God. God, reach out, Lord. Or don't let us get out of town good. Tomorrow evening, Lord, don't let us reach Dallas. God, does something begins to happen beyond man. Oh, Son of God. Lord, don't let the sun go down three times. Don't let it sink Tuesday. God, till heaven is on fire. Earth is being shook or something in Tulsa. The very teeth is falling out of their heads. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you made their teeth chatter. Lord, you made their, their, their bodies petrified. Couldn't move. You're still God. Paul couldn't see for three days. Blind. Had to be took bodily to a room. You're still God. Lord, you sent worms. Ate that old king up. The Holy Ghost smote him. Lord, this modern bunch says you don't do that, but you smote that old king that persecuted Paul. And worms eat him up. And he died. Lord, you said in the same year, Lord, you sent your prophets in the same year, and sometime in the same day, God, Lord, the word fell upon their enemies. God, these are not my enemies. They're your enemies. This whole government up yonder is your enemies. Let wrath fall upon them. Let wrath fall upon these people that continue to kill the unborn. Let wrath fall upon these people that continue to recognize homosexuals as regular, as regular man and woman. God, I pray. Lord, why would you destroy Sodom and Mar and not destroy us today? God, from east to west, from God, from north to south, in the middle of America, in the middle of Canada, God, shake Europe upside down. Lord, you said you'd visit us with earthquakes and storms. Lord, send a, Lord, send a pack of tornadoes, maybe uh, uh, about 50, over Tulsa, around Tulsa, through Tulsa. God, and let them be powerful. Let them be two or three hundred mile tornadoes. Let them be a mile, two, uh, five miles wide. 
Lord, in the name of Jesus, like you spoke a year or so ago about that place in Kansas, that you're going to send a tornado to a whole sign. I was a whole city, Lord, and you've done it in, uh, in a turnaround. Lord, I don't even believe it's three days. Jesus, you're still God. God, wake us up. Wake us up. Lord. Bring us back. Lord, I heard a little voice this morning. I know it was probably to me, but let it touch Brother Taylor. Let it touch Brother Blue, Brother Johnson, all the preachers. And Lord, the brother just testified, his family, and all the rest in here. Let it break up our fallow grounds, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother and Sister Cloyd, Lord, let it be such a, a shaking in their soul. Mighty God, I don't want to go to hell, and I don't want nobody else to go to hell. God, I don't want nobody else, Lord, to be spewed out of your mouth. God, you said because we're in this middle ground stage, you spew us out of the mouth. God, we're so lukewarm, we don't even hear the voice. It's better off to be cold where we can hear you. God, on fire, Lord, we, we won't have to, to, to be rebuked. Mighty God, we pray. Send your word, the Holy Ghost. Lord, help my house. Lord, go you into all the world. In the name of Jesus, those that's on the way here for tonight and in the morning, protect them, God. Lord, those that's leaving, got peace to go, bless them. And God bless us as we head out, Lord. Brother and Sister Tony, Lord, when they go out to, to New Mexico next week, leaving shortly, tomorrow evening or something, getting in there to get that tent up, Lord. Out there, Lord, bless Bless, bless Gallup, Lord. Send a stir out there. God, let something happen out there. This time ain't never happened. God, let, let, let a, a, a dead baby, a dead person be resurrected or something. Do something beyond man, Lord. Do something beyond doctors. Do something beyond the undertaker. Mighty God, bring a, a spiritual awakening. And Lord, as we head out, Lord, for a few churches before we go to Africa. God, I pray you'll bless us, Lord. Don't let no hindrance, don't let nothing stand between. God, bring an awakening, Lord. And God, we believe. We believe that every need can be met. We believe, Lord, that you won't ever request granted. Be it unto them, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you got a special need, would you lay, raise your hand? God, see these needs. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, mighty God, I pray you'll provide. Lord, the scripture said the Lord shall provide. Lord, you'll make a way. The Lord will provide. Be it so, Lord. Go before him as a flaming sword. Go behind him, Lord, as a wall of fire. In the name of Jesus, be it so. All for your glory. In the wonderful Savior's name. Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand to the Lord. I tell you, I've seen to fall. Much too bigger thing for mortal man. Take a look around you. Handwriting's on the wall. Somehow we've got to have God's help in hand. This world has never been in the awful shape it's in. Our leaders are in doubt of what to do. Take a look around you, and writing's on the wall. Somehow we've got to have God's help in hand. Like the anxious roam of empire, world is doomed to fall. It's a much too bigger thing for mortal man. Oh, take a look around you, and writing's on the wall. Somehow we've got to have God's help in hand. 
This world has never been in the awful shape it's in. Our leaders are in doubt of what to do. Oh, take a look around you and writings on the wall. Somehow we've got to have God's hip in the hand. Oh, the mighty roar of gunfire is now a local sound. Our city streets are filled with anger men. Laws become a mockery throughout this troubled land. And destruction seemed to be the current trend. This nation's never been in the awful shape it's in. Obama's in doubt of what to do. Oh, take a look around you. Handwriting's on the wall. Jesus, take a hold and lead us through. What we need today is a revival to come. Preachers, get on your knees and pray. If you don't hear from heaven, destruction's going to come on you. Oh, Jesus, take a hold and lead us through. This world has never been in the awful shape it's in. Our leaders are in doubt of what to do. Oh, take a look around you. The handwriting's on the wall. Oh, Jesus, take a hold and lead us through. Oh, Jesus, take a hold and lead us through. While I was praying fervently for the Lord to hear my plea, show me His will for revivals today. Saw a million souls are dying, heard another million crying, saying, Come and tell us that Jesus saved. I said, Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I pray for the heathen to be saved. I said, Lord, send me. Lord, I'll go for thee. Lord, I will pray that the heathen might be saved. While I continued on in prayer, found that Jesus, He cares. His love for the heathen, it's the same as it is for me. So the harvest filled with dying, the reapers wouldn't try. Together in the golden grain. I said, Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I'll pray for 
the heathen to be saved. I said, Lord, I'm going. Lord, I'm praying. Lord, I'm seeking for the heathen to be saved. He said, the fields are white, the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, laborers to come forth. I said, Lord, I'm praying, Lord, I'm giving. Lord, I'm praying that the heathen might be saved. I said, Lord, send me. I'll go for you. Lord, I will seek gathering the heathen for you. Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I'll pray that the heathen might be seen. Oh, Jesus, as I continued on in prayer, found that Jesus, He cares. His love for India and Africa is the same as it is for me. I looked and He said, the fields are white. The laborers are few. The harvest field is dying. Just look. A million souls I saw one day dead. And a million are dying. Death everywhere. Every town, every village, people laying by the side of the roads. Big old garbage dump trucks picking up people, taking them out, burning them. I couldn't believe such a thing could happen. Never had something to get a hold of me so desperate. That's what drove me into that time of fasting. As I was, we was going out of 66 into 67. That God spoke to me in New Delhi. He said, if you go back to America now, start fasting. Oh, Jesus. God's got a message. God's got a message to save the heathen. While I was praying right there in Delhi, fervently for the Lord to hear my plea. Show me His will. For revivals today Saw a million souls are dying <clears throat> Heard another million crying Saying come and tell us that Jesus saved You know before I left there was a, a, a silver headed white lady, I don't remember who she was, I probably didn't know her then, but she brought a bunch of hundred dollar bills <coughs> and give it to me, I guess she knew what was happening in India, I didn't, I wasn't a newspaper man, I wasn't a TV watcher. And I sure wasn't one that ever listened to the news. I didn't have time for the news. I didn't have time for the TV.
And she said, when you get to India, she said, take this and feed the hungry. You know, all of that money she gave me, I took it down to a place to buy food and bought it, spent every bit of it. Every dime of it, which was into the hundreds of dollars. Got some help, went out there and began to feed them poor people. But you know, everybody ate that day. It was in that area, multitude. But you know what? The next day, I didn't have no more money. And they was hungry again. Just like you and I, we eat today. If, if we eat at noon, if we eat at seven, if we eat at three in the evening, if you go an hour or two past that, your old belly starts telling you, you ain't eat. Their belly was telling them the next day they want something to eat. But there wasn't no more money. Even what little bit of money I had. I had spent that. Where we stayed, they brought us two boiled eggs for breakfast and two soda crackers. At noon, two boiled eggs and the brother's women is a big old man and he could eat a dozen. I gave him my two eggs and two crackers. I said, this ain't going to do me no good. <laughs> and I was nearly about fasting all that time. I didn't eat. But I wasn't fasting. I just was starving because I couldn't eat. I walked down the streets of a million people. There wasn't a little old store, you know, in the end of it, they got the little stores. Brother Taylor, you know what I'm talking about, little stores. Buy little stuff, you know, rice and beans. It wasn't a place to buy rice. They was uh, giving out rice. This was over in Madras. Had them old planes that skipped. When if, when, when, you know, if I have a car, skips a beat. <laughs> Spark plug out. Makes it don't run in harmony. Two engine little old passion planes. Couldn't hardly get off the ground. We had to fly on that. And I thought, Lord, I held it up. I believe it crashed if I hadn't sat on the wing. Hold it up. And I saw as a little woman, she come walking with a handful of rice. Like that. And she's walking so slow. And Followed her down at that little village from where she got to rise. A little, but a little house made out of rags and pasteboard and a piece of tin here and there, just like a wigwam. Three or four little children crawled out. And she put that rice on a coconut leaf and she'd take a little pinch and she'd give this one and they little kids were so trained they didn't try to hog it you know most pitiful sight I ever saw I, know, I, I ain't never told us much there's a world dying out there and, and now you know what America I've, I've preached this to America now for since 66, try to put a burden on you, especially after the next year. The Lord already touched me. Give me this message to go into all the world. I had a message. 
to take to the world. Go in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And she was feeding them little, she went up and she, <coughs> little clubs, and they come crawling out of that little place. And in getting a little pinch of that rice, eat till they ate sometime a grain, just a grain of rice falling in the little sand does. And little kids pick up that one little grain of rice. How oh, that dirt. I thought I would die. At the times I've left food on my plate. Back then, you know, I was if you didn't have my food, just write a send it back. You ever done that? Gripe. Cancel the order. Fuss. Don't like this. Put it back. You ever been that way? You ever been that sorry low down? Probably every one of us in here is that sorry low down. But here are these little babies. Little bitty kids. Picking up that one little grass of rice off that sand. Eating it. People want to know why I've got a burden for India and Africa. I was in uh, Johannesburg. And I was back up. I forget to change that country up there. Them was the blackest people I ever saw. They black to the, like a shiny black car. That's how black they were. Just beautiful black. Just shine like a brand new black car coming right off, right off the lot. And I thought, they, they, these people, they, I didn't know there was all this was that people lived in straw building, straw hats, that their stores made out of straw. I didn't know the streets was dirt streets. I didn't know they had rags and straw for the top of their houses. Oh, we didn't live in the best of houses growing up. But I tell you, I ain't never griped at nothing I lived in since. And I uh, had, I about took all this, and I couldn't take all it no more. <laughs> we went to the airport from there, and I told the guys, I said, I'm going back to America, and somehow I'm going to get a hold of God. <laughs> well, while I was at the airport, we had a long wait over before we got on that old plane. It flew us on up to New Delhi. There was a, a, a lady A uh, real old-fashioned, homeless-looking lady. Looked to be about 70. She brought uh, a whole group of women, 40 or 50 of them, maybe 100, to the airport to see an airplane. they never seen an airplane. And I, I told the guys, we you see that she was, she, she was a white lady, but she'd been over us so long till her skin had sort of got a little dark. But I told that guy, I said, that, that lady is from America. Her hair was silver, but everybody's hair gets that way. No matter what color it is, it get this color if you have to have that wisdom in you. <laughs> now, if you ain't got no wisdom, you may be bald-headed or black as tar, red as <laughs> a red bird. <laughs> A green is a lizard. <laughs> but anyway, I, walk, I said, watch, I'm going to go up there and say hello to her. And she's going to start talking. She said, you're going to make a fool of yourself. I'm going to say, how you doing, ma'am? She turned around. She turned around. Boy, she was so glad to hear. And she went, her and I started talking. And, oh, I wept. She said, I... was 19 years old, and I was going to start at a college. My dad, mom, 
sent me to college, and I got up somewhere in the east. And she said, when I got up there, you know, signing up, somehow or another, there was one of them real holiness meeting. Now, she's on, in her 70s, so this would put her back, sawed around Susan. And she started talking to me, and, of course, I was, she knew I was a missionary because <laughs> nobody else went over there hardly but missionaries in them days. And she uh, tried to be a missionary anyway. <laughs> and she, we began to talk, and she told how, she said, I've been here 50 years. Said, I got up there, <clears throat> got in that meeting at that, where I was supposed to go to college. <laughs> and got baptized the Holy Ghost. Back then, they had real gift of prophecy and interpretation, real gift of tongue. Wasn't this year, like the lady last night over there, just trying to talk in tongue, didn't know how. Because she didn't have no Holy Ghost to get no tongue to talk. <laughs> That's the only thing I know. <laughs> all I know in the day of Pentecost, the Bible said they all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they didn't just, they spoke in other languages. They didn't remember, I said, come on, mama, haka, ba, 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 ba. But no such stuff going on. It was languages. And it was on Azusa. And it was that same revival of Azusa was breaking out all over America. And she said, I, I got saved and got the Holy Ghost. And said, the Lord, through prophecy and through the, of the Holy Ghost, spoke to me to come to India and to help the, to help the women. Women, you know, in India, back then is less now. Now they're getting a little more privileged back then. And she said, I got to India. They're in Madras. And back then, you didn't have all this abortion stuff. If, 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 if a family had a little girl, they would go and lay it out in front of a store or put it out on side to sidewalk in a little basket. And she said she got to know these little babies and they're all little girls. And said the Lord spoke to her to start a home to get these babies, to raise these babies. And I forget how many she told me since then. She Something like 50,000. And she said people from New York and different places. She didn't mean to stay her whole life over there. Back then, you know, uh, Europe was uh, allied of America, and they, they was over all that part of the country. And she said that she just finally, people back in the States, and she started, as she raised these babies into uh, women, and preachers from all over India came and picked their wives, or their dads picked their wives, from that, and and she raised them babies into to women, and finally it become a a school for women, you know, dislocated women, and she had spent her life, and she said, "I'll never go back to America." Now this was more than forty years ago, forty four years ago. Now I know she's going to be with the Lord. And that little woman, as I sat there and talked to her, we had to wait about two or three hours on that plane. And she told me her story. And it gave me a burden. I come back to Delhi, flew up there, and I sat in there crying. And the Lord, I read in the paper that up there waiting on, trying to find out what I was to do. And I read that. Hindu Times, and it was an English paper, said the 44th priest has died today, yesterday. Starvation, praying, fasting to the Krishna and them Hindu gods to not let the government, because the government was 
had allowed people to start eating beef because of the famine. A lot of cows got this. One time they had said they had about as many cows as it did people. You know, cows, you know, they still run the streets. Cows got to right away. He don't have to stop at a red light or nothing. He can go anywhere or she, anywhere they want to. They just, everywhere is cows. Because they're gods. And you don't touch God. <laughs> and they believe that just like, don't touch my anointing. They feel that about the cow. And they were fasting for the government to stop it. And the 44th priest, and a voice spoke to me, he sat inside that little bed, wasn't, wasn't even as wide as that piece of plywood, one of them little bunkers, beds. He said, when my preachers will set their heart to fast and to pray, Bud Chambers had got me to go to India. And he wrote this little song for me. Lord, I'll go. He saw in me something, you know. Few people saw it in me. W.B. Sr. saw it in me. Gordon Lindsay saw it in me. And a few people saw that, that there was something that I had a call on my life that, that I could reach the poor. Just like all these others, that swimp, a wimp in Houston, you know, he says God raised him up to, to reach the rich. Well, God didn't do no such a thing. Anybody tells you that? that? That rooster feller, I heard him say God called him to reach the rich. He didn't call him to the poor. Well, that's the biggest biggest human made lie that conflicts the Bible the Bible said the poor have the gospel and and a few months later April the 17th as I came back to America driven into that fast April the 17th God gave me the message A message. Would you sing that chorus with me again? Just sing one. Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I'll pray for the heathen to be saved. Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I'll pray for the heathen to be saved. While I was praying fervently for the Lord to show me His will. His will for the heathen, the heathens today saw a million Souls are dying, heard another million crying, saying, come and tell us that Jesus loves. Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I'll pray. For the heathen to be saved. You know, there's one thing. If you can't go. If you can't go. As I continued on in prayer. Found that Jesus, He cares. His love for the heathen is the same. I said, Lord, now this is a little baby. <laughs> Praise. I said, Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll give. Lord, I'll pray for the heathen 
to be saved. Let's say it this way. Lord, I'm going. Lord, I'm giving. Lord, I'm praying for the heathen to be saved. And here's the scripture that the Lord gave me for soul winning. Psalms 41. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. You know, Red, you know it. I don't know. Just as uh, I got in the car, Brother Blue said he saw this morning for the president, if he gets his policies through, everybody that don't buy government health care, he's going to fine them $1,000 apiece. Man, ain't that sad. We're almost under dictatorship right now. That rifle that I saw may be for him. Somebody got a rifle out there. Something's going to happen. It's going to throw the world in chaos. Some got a long barrel rifle. I've been seeing it. The barrel is, it looked as long as it looked like a buffalo. And the only reason I ever seen a buffalo gun, I saw Bat Madison one time, and he had one. Thank you, Jesus. Buffalo gun. He was a buffalo hunter. And it'll reach way over yonder. They say a buffalo gun can, it can get a shot at you and kill you for a mile. One mile. But something is going to happen in America. I just don't believe America is going to continue to go on the way she's going. You know, in a church, you know, for the last 25 or 30, especially the 70s, on up to now, the churches is, are putting all their money in buildings and colleges and, and uh, basketball courts and football courts and, and pleasure. All the mega churches, they got, they got all the fun that children can find out you under at the fairs and the fairgrounds. All the play stuff and everything that, that they need. Ball, ball teams. It's a shame. No wonder God has left the church. No wonder there's no burden in the church. I don't care if you don't like it. Uh, God didn't mean for, for kids to get involved in all that. God meant for kids to be raised to serve God. You see, it's a different generation. You're right, but it's not a different God. It's not a different Bible. It's not a different Bible. You say, well, I can't control let them. Let them. If they're if they hard-headed, don't be a protector. If you go ahead and go along with your kids, you're a protector of their sin. You're a protector of their sin. You give an account of it yourself. You tell them. You tell them. You correct them. You show them. You show them. And show them in the right spirit. Don't talk to them like dogs and scold them like, uh, kick them around like animals. Set them down and talk to them in a way that a dad should talk to them and a mom should talk to them. Instead of scolding them and screaming at them, I'll knock your brains out. I'll, I'll take you back there and take my belt to you. Don't, that, that ain't no way to talk to a kid. There ain't no way to talk to a kid. Mama, she, she'd warn us, but she didn't. She done it in a way. She said, "Son, I'll take you in that back room." But it was sweet. She'd whip me laughing. I said, "Mom, why are you laughing?" So I just want to show you I ain't mad. I just want you to do right. <laughs> I mean, when they're mad, they get out of hand. One time she got mad, and I, boy, she. I thought, boy, she was just on top of me, man. She had me down. Man, she was ready to pour it on me. She, I provoked her. I said, Lord, if you give me this time, I won't know, go that far no more. <laughs> man, I, I was about 13. Praise God. Blessed is he that considers the poor. We've got to get a burden. In the morning, we're going to have anointing in service but I feel in my soul you know you'd be surprised who God could use if God could hear it from your heart Lord hear mine and look you, see, you know people they, they say well I can't go push myself like that for God well look how you push yourself for yourself and then you still wind up sick 
You know, all these, look at all these sick people. Man, they can't even do nothing no more. Uh, uh, someone called me uh, uh, this morning, about three or four years ago, a preacher's wife. She just up said, I don't want to be a preacher's wife. I don't want all this here burden and stuff. And no more, I don't want to bear all this. And she left and got a divorce and married somebody else. But anyway, he called me this morning and said, guess what happened? One of their kids called him and said, their mama, now that woman that walked out, said something's happened to her. She in a wheelchair and been in a wheelchair the rest of her life. Unless something happened. And I said, yeah. I said, that's what people, I said, God, God ain't going to let folk, folks get away. He said, God put it on all. He said, he not put it on us, but he will allow it to come on us. You look that up in the Hebrew, there where he said, I'm not putting on these diseases. Look it up in the Hebrew. He said, I'll not will allow it nor permit none of these things to come upon you because I am the Lord that heals you. And if you look after God's kingdom, God told me, said, if you look after my kingdom, His kingdom is souls. His kingdom is not cathedrals. His kingdom is not how much money you got. His kingdom is not what kind of car you drive. He said, go and preach the gospel of the kingdom, which is the gospel of deliverance. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach deliverance to people that's in any kind of spiritual or physical or sin, captivity. Preach them out. Of. It's just like somebody that spends their time trying to get people out of jail. Jesus gave His life to get us out of sin and out of sickness and out of diseases. He didn't come to make all of us millionaires. Because uh, He said, uh, who, who wants to be a millionaire? Unless you can give it to God. I've had people say, how would you like to be a millionaire, Brother Terrell? I said, you, you want to give it to me to do something with God, but I don't want it for myself. He said, why? He said, how hard? I said, I just isn't making it now. <laughs> I started looking around this morning trying to find a dollar to get a cup of coffee, and I found about 60 cents. I said, Brother Blue, have you got a dollar? I like stop getting me a cup. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what about the offering? Them offers ain't mine. They sealed up, put in envelopes, rolled on and tore and, and sent on. Cash hand delivered and the other Federal Express to, to keep this gospel going. It's what it's about. I said, what it's about? Jesus has called you and I to consider the poor. And the Lord spoke to me. An angel came to me and said, when I was in deep fasting, said, blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. This was the scripture that God gave me for reaching India. This was the scripture God gave me for reaching Africa. That if people would get under the burden, if churches would quit trying to, to, to everything they got, just keep building. You ever notice them? Churches keep building, keep building, keep building. You keep, and it's just, it's just uh, I'll look down here in Dallas. You get on Interstate 20 and about one side of Dallas to the other. You'll see them big old 15, 20, 50. In Atlanta, uh, uh, the other day, they all auctioned off a $100 million charismatic church that the pastor couldn't pay for, for $12 million. Millions and millions. I knew a relative that went over there. They said all they'd done from one... Service, have three or four services on Sunday, and from one service to the other. They didn't, the whole hour they had church, it was a, about raising money, sow that seed, and, and get rich. 
sow that seed and get rich. And now it's all gone down the drain. That woman down from Florida you see on TV that married Donald Trump's uh, uh, bodyguard. That woman had that multi-million dollar church sold. That other woman down yonder that used to be a little holiness woman, South Georgia, that Bynum lady, sold her two multi-million dollar homes and her multi-million dollar church, auctioned it off for the highest bidder. All of that money could have reached souls. Souls. The Bible said, how can they go? Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. The, the man of God said, but how can I go except I ain't sent? How can you go except you be sent? This is the, the greatest call. There ain't no greater call. You may think the high office of Canada, the high office of, uh, of, the, of um, the nation, the high office of Europe, that ain't the, that ain't the greatest. Well, I guarantee you, uh, the least of you in here is going to get a bigger reward than all these 44 presidents when they die. Do you hear me? When we all stand before, they ain't going to be rewarded for being a president. You're going to be rewarded for what you do for God. And what you do to consider the poor. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will preserve him. Protect him. How many wants to be protected in these times? The Lord will preserve him. You know, I'm not, he didn't say just, can you? You can stuff into the spoil. But you preserve pears, they'll be there ten years from now. It's like honey. Honey will never spoil. You know why the bees... They take it and they eat that juice out of that flower and then they burp it up and that's what they make honey. <laughs> See, I know things y'all don't know. Y'all know all this your uh, head stuff, but I know the real stuff. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and honey is the only food in the world that don't have to be digested. You eat a spoon of honey, it does. You do not digest it. You know why? It's already pre-digested. Jesus has already pre-digested our salvation. Hallelujah. I said, Jesus has already went to Calvary. He's preserved us. I said, He has preserved us. If we'll get in here with Him and get busy working for Him, get busy taking up the cross, if you can't go pray, if you can't go pray, if you can't go sin, God will protect you. God will sustain you. God will keep you. And it's here. We're in tribulation. It ain't going to get no better. It's done got $2 trillion worse. Is that better? Uh, is that better? Wasn't uh, $600 billion been enough? But... This president, one president in eight years got us six hundred billion. One president in five months got us two trillion. That's a thousand billion twice. Man, if I had that much money, I could send all y'all. Buy us a big old jet. Get us some pilots and get pray that lay hands on them, cast the devils out of them, get them full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get us some. Get us some male steers and cast the devils out of them, you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. And just fly us to these countries and just get the reform flying. Hallelujah. Let's evangelize the world. Thank you, Jesus. How many believe it's time to evangelize the world? It's time Jesus didn't say set it home. He said go into all the world. Go into all the world. Go into all the world. We've got too many people sitting around. Sitting around. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel. What gospel? He said the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom of God within men. See, the, the kingdom of God is not material. God within men. Uh, Jesus Christ being the king. The kingdom being. 
You got to be a king to be a king, to have a kingdom. And Jesus is the king of his kingdom. The king of kings of his kingdom. All the other kingdoms are going to come to naught. But his kingdom will not come to naught. And he gave me this scripture. The Lord will preserve him. He told me I'd been fasting so long. And he told me, came to me. And he told me, said, the people that send you and keep you out here preaching, he said, I'm going to deliver, I'm going to preserve them. I will keep him alive. He even promised me that their kids, and their kids' kids. You said, well, well, some of these younger, well, you don't know what God can do. Man, don't limit God to your little uh, puny unbelief. Now, that unbelief ain't nothing but puny stuff. Unbelief ain't nothing. Unbelief the nearest nothing you can get to. <laughs> And, it's, and, and unbelief is sin. I said unbelief is sin. If I about unbelief, it's about the worst sin you can commit except blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You said, why? When you got unbelief, you can't get yourself straightened out. Faith, believing, is get, turns you around. Believing switches everything. Unbelief just gets it worse. Unbelief, the more unbelief you have, the back off you give from God. Unbelief backs you away from God. Just keep pushing you so far out there till sometime it's hard to get back. And only faith can get you back to God. Keep Him alive. Man, I mean, we'll stay alive without any diseases. Oh, oh, did y'all hear? Uh, you know this year, uh, bird flu ain't over. Y'all thought it was. I heard a report on it yesterday. This thing, it's, it's done got over uh, a whole bunch of people died in America with it. And this done got all over the world this year. What kind of flu is it, Daniel? Hog flu. Yes, sir. This hog flu. <laughs> Pig flu. <laughs> It'll be chicken flu next. Because <laughs> I spoke it. <laughs> Chicken flu, watch a chicken flu break out. Well, this is a hog flu. Man, they, they said, and it, I was shocked that the people in America got it. We need Jesus in this country. We need Jesus all, but there are going to be some plagues break out. They ain't going to be able to find no antidote for it. They're not going to find no antidote to cure. These plagues. Jesus said he's going to apply to angels of the seven last plagues. We've got to face them, which is diseases, plagues. But he said, I will protect you from all the plagues. Fact about it, God said, if you'll hearken to my word, give ear to my commandments, do said none of these plagues that plague the, the Egyptians or the heathens. None of these plagues that you see in Africa. None of these plagues you see in India. Didn't he say it? You keep my commandments, you go into all the world. If you can't go, you sin. If you can't, if you can't go, pray. He said, pray for labors. You ever read that one? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Didn't say send me. One said, send me, but said, if you can't go, pray for labors, that God will send his labors. We need labors today. Preserve him, keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of these enemies that's in high place of offices, all this junk. The Lord will strengthen him on the bed of a linguishness. You get sick and something comes, the Lord will heal you. You will be made, he will make all your bed in sicknesses which restore him to health. Man, what, man, what, this is good stuff. I mean, if you do get yourself run down and something comes on you, but God, because you've been faithful to him and faithful in prayer, faithful in consider the poor, faithful if you can't go sin, if you can't sin, pray. If you ain't got it to give, pray God to get a hold of the ones that will give. Pray for the laborers. Pray for God to protect them. They're going and they're coming. We'll be ordered by the Lord. I don't know what a better promise a person could want. 
I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When, he sh- when shall he die? <laughs> God. Man, a lot of David said, Lord, just kill them all. <laughs> I need David to be praying for me. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a little scared to pray for folks to die. But need David here, he wasn't scared, but he wasn't afraid to let him do praying against my enemies. But otherwise, what God is saying, he'll take care of your enemies. If he comes to see me, he speaks vanity. His heart gathers in iniquity to himself. When he goes... Abroad he shall tell it. All that hate me and whisper together against me, against me to do, they devilish my hurt. An evil disease, an evil disease saith, say they cleave fast to him. God, all this, God puts it back on your enemies. You know, people be praying against you. People be working against you. God said them same things will come back on you. And God will preserve you. Otherwise, God is promising David, He's promised me and you that if we'll consider the poor, if we'll take to heart God's kingdom, God said, I will get you through these times. I will help you. And I believe in the day when they bring us before the the courts and bring us over the, the magistrates. God said they're going to do that. That God said I'll be there. Fear not. Don't take no thought what you'll say. For I'm going to be right there. When they bring before the magistrates. I'm going to talk for you. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at your right hand. I'm going to be with you. And if you are cast into prison. Just hold on. I'll be with you to death. I'll be with you through death. But yet then there was another number that he brought all the way through the, the, them, them last periods of tribulation during the Antichrist, during all of that, a number that no man can number. And I believe that these, a great number of these are going to be over yonder in these countries and Africa and, and these nations that's opened up. I believe God going to bring them in by the millions. It's already the statistic that says over 200 million have been saved in India because of this gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of Jesus. These other preachers went over and taught family, family matters and all that. But they don't need to, we don't need to go over and teach them Indians about family. There's a guy over in Africa from Jackson, Alabama. I said, why are you over here? He said, well, I come over here to teach family matters. Well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Well, these gals over there don't even, they don't even, they have to go in the back room when a man comes. That's right. and don't they? That's right. Go in the back room. Man, you got to teach them about virtue. <laughs> man, they don't even know nothing. They don't even know the guy they're going to marry until their daddy come leading them in. <laughs> they don't get to taste a good mouth of sugar. Till after they married. <laughs> and all these over here done done everything with sugar. <laughs> then got the babies on the way sometimes. <laughs> Before they even engaged. <laughs> Some of them don't even get married after they come. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we don't need to send no preachers over yonder to Africa. Africa, same way. Them little gals don't know nothing till till, till they come in there and their daddy give them to somebody done got seven. <laughs> and I don't, I know what I'm talking about. They don't need family values. They need the gospel. Yeah. The devil's got these preachers to see. Yes, sir. Spend thousand dollars go over and try to teach family values. While the heathens know more about decent sin you'll never know. America used to be that way. Well, let me tell you right now, they'll take you out and hang you right quick. They'll still stone you. 
I guarantee if they stoned him in America, it'd be a little bit different. I dream that they, they, if they was, well, let's get on over that, because I'm having bullets come from everywhere. It's a gospel they need. Yet they, they whisper against the, the righteous man. My own familiar friends, even that was Jesus, in whom I trusted, did eat my bread and has lifted up his heel against me. You'll find it in the gospel where Judas but you, O oh Lord, be merciful to me. Raise me up that I may require them. By this I know that you favor me because my enemies does not triumph over me. Ain't that good? You know why David considered the poor? David, he, he wasn't just somebody sat in a high office and, and, and taught just like the president's own sister. Starving to death up under New York. And he talking about us doing this and that. Wouldn't even give her a dime. Own blood sister. You didn't know that? Been all over the news. I mean, he ain't concerned about you. Well, if he wouldn't give his sister and his brother a piece of bread. When we had a dinner the other day that cost 30 Five, $45,000 of the government's tax money just to have a little supper in a time of crisis when the, when the house was trying to get together to get, get, get us out of this mess. Y'all see that? Well, that ain't no concern. And I'm going to tell you, we better wake up. We done fell in the hands of an enemy of the cross. And our hope is to get a bunch of men and women in here lined up. God stir them up. That's the reason I'm... Cancel a meeting in Georgia. I'll put it off for a, a month and a half. Why well, can go to some of these churches, try to wake up some of these people. Wake up some folks. Get some folks on their knees. Get some folks praying. Get some folks back to God. I believe that's why we're in this building. When we get this gospel, get some of you stirred up. Get your souls on fire. Get you on your knees. Get you with the Bible in your hand. If you can't go, pray, read, pray. Get an extra dollar, put it up. Don't go, blow it. Well, you, you, you drink enough belly washers a day to support a missionary. Did you know some of these missionaries, we got missionaries in Cuba, they won't let us give them but $10 a month. Well, some of y'all spend uh, enough on belly washers, $10 a day. Well, I guess I better get off of that one. Had, had just some little nibbles. You ever done that? Started putting it back on the rack. Well, these people, a preacher, a whole month, and somehow they make it on 10 bucks. That's the only money that Castro let us, they was uh, giving them seven, now they let us give them 10. And I heard the other day they might let us start giving them fourteen, fifteen dollars. You don't have to sneak that in. They won't let us give them much. But you know what? God revival has broken out in in small groups all over Cuba. You know, hard times to put people to pray in. You know, Sam Todd spent six months in Cuba before the fall of of uh, uh, communism, warning them and. Waking them up, T.L. Osborne had a, a six or so weeks revival in Cuba in his early days just before Cuba fell. And, and, and the, a lot of people got saved, but the rich and those that, uh, people over there, you know, Cuba's getting in that rich thing then, you know, and Cuba failed and been on the bungees ever since. A lot of nations that once had the gospel that, that, that the rich... Calls God. That's what's happened to this country. People have put their monies in bags with holes in them. People have put their offerings, throw them away in bags with holes in them. Buy something that wasn't worth nothing when you got it home. Opened it and couldn't take it back. <laughs> Went down to Walmart, bought them all them clothes and washed them and hang it up <laughs> once I draw it up. You know, 
that's the truth. How many ever done it? Wash it one time, couldn't get it the next time. First time is too big, next time it's like lip tar trying to get in it. <laughs> Wasted the money. 20, 30 bucks. Gone down the drain and didn't need it no how. You know it's the truth? My Lord, you, you, you come in, bought your stuff, and you open the closet door, everything started falling down. And you start packing it back in there, trying to find a place. <laughs> Ain't that true? Everything falling out. <laughs> I'm just preaching you some illustrated preaching. <laughs> you know it's the truth. In the world, dying and going to hell. And still buying more. Didn't even worry what you got the last time. Especially the women. <laughs> well, I guess there won't be no women here tonight. Just me and I have a good time. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you, O oh Lord, be merciful to me. You better be crying out for mercy. Raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that you favor me because my enemies does Try up over me. But as for me, you uphold me in my integrity. Set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And he put two big old good praise God amens on it. I'll read this. I was may put some more scripture this tonight. As far the heart beats after the water of the deer brook, so painted my soul after you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come? People wait. I heard that this morning. Deep calling. And I said, Lord, next week's while I'm out yonder. In New Mexico. Let it be so. It's just a little taste of uh, some of the places abroad. My tears have been my meat day and night. Otherwise, crying and weeping. I've been praying for God to break up my grounds more. And I've been crying a lot, but I ain't, still ain't broken enough. While they continue to say to me, where is your God? That's what they're saying today. Who is God? What is God? What are you talking about? Call me a fanatic. Stay away from Terrell. Well, that's all right. I stay away from them. When I, when I, when I remembered these things, I poured my soul out in me, for I had gone with the multitude. Had I gone, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy days. It's time for us to go to the house of God. It's time for us to keep God's holy promises. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquiet in me? Hope you in God. For I shall yet praise Him for the, the help of His countenance, His presence. Oh my God, my soul cast, is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan. I remember from the book of Acts. Deep calls to the deep. At the noise of your water spouse. All your ways, your billows are going over me. Yet the Lord will command His love kindness in the daytime. In the night, he will, His song. He shall be with me. My prayer, is, my prayer is to the God of my life. O 
I would say to, to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why, why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? You know, I look back these last, well, since the 90s, uh, maybe the latter part of the 90s, the meetings really started to going down from here after all these TV preachers, him and all of them. And I, of course, I, uh, 87, 89, a uh, uh, brother, uh, board A come, and I got involved over yonder, and I'm glad of that. That's what's kept me alive. Is getting involved over there. And I was glad. I could reach more people over there. One one crusade do they they would in a whole year over here. You know. And even ourselves. And and God has made it up to us. And I believe God is going to reward Sister and I and those that sent us, those that prayed for us. I believe that God's going to, when that reward day come, I saw it. As far as I could see, multitudes and people that had my envelopes, our envelopes in their hands, which represented their offering. And the Lord said, this reward is not only for you, but it's for them. Everyone's going to be rewarded according to what he has invested, according to how he has stood. Thank God. You may never see a soul you want to God here. But if you've helped us, when you get to heaven, you're going to wonder where all, when God puts you in a city of a multitude, makes you so like the little mayor, ruler. Didn't you say that? Yes, it ain't going to be a bossy thing, passing laws, making hardship. It's going to be a wonderful rule. It's going to be a godly leadership. Ain't that going to be great? Otherwise, it ain't going to be even though people will be serving, you'll be over cities. We're going to be people in heaven. We're going to be, ain't going to be, so many people said we're going to be spirits. Well, how are we going to know how to, uh, who, who'd you say you was? <laughs> Brother Blue? I can't see you. Are you sure that's Brother Blue that carried me out to eat? <laughs> well, how, how am I going to know his spirit from your spirit? Well, somebody got a, a, a cracked nut in their head. <laughs> Ain't that right? Somebody got, I mean, they got that, that nut up there is, is busted. I mean, I believe that Bible. I said, I believe that Bible. I mean, we're going to know one another. When I was out of body, had those out of body experiences, I saw my mom and dad in heaven. I was at the foot of the bed and 67, praying in a little bed I was sleeping in, in a revival. And I, I was took, I got on my knees, and I went in, out, out of body and was took to heaven. My dad, and my mom lived in a beautiful little house. It was shrubbery. My mom loved flowers. My dad loved flowers. And he was out there trimming the flowers. Mom was standing there, you know, handing him his different tools. And they were just as, oh, mom was about 35, and he's about 35. About that age, you know, about Jesus' age. And oh, it was so wonderful. Later, after Randall passed, I saw him. He was standing up on a little mountain light and a waterfall, and he had a mansion up there. And he was standing there, and he looked at me with his arms like that, you know. Looked at me about 25 or 30 years old. Health is, health is, it could be just plumb, healthy and handsome. Looking out there at me, praise God. I said, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. One time Jesus told me, he said, you go back and you tell my people that I've gone to prepare a place for them. I saw the heavenly mansions. I saw the houses. I saw the such beautiful flowers. I saw the streets were just not paved, but just pure, pure gold. Oh, such a place. Such a, and I've heard, uh, 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 you know, sometimes Fox and sometimes Larry King, he has a, a crazy you know, he's an agnostic, a monastic. He said, but uh, he never said there ain't no God, but he said to leave it open in case. And he gets a lot of them cases. If he keeps getting them up there, 
And you got several people I've heard had out of body experience. One man was killed in a car wreck and went to heaven, was dead for a few hours in the ambulance while they carried, laying out there while they carried the others in. And then and, and God raised him up and he was told, broke all the pieces. But when God healed him, he was, and he said during that time, he, he was took to heaven. And he saw and he described God as a giant glory and a light. He couldn't look upon him. Well, that's the way I saw God. And Jesus right there. I already saw Jesus. I saw Jesus right in that glory. And another man that had a, uh, died, and, and he, he described hell. And he come back. And he come back. And I read this in U.S. News where a woman was killed in a car wreck or something or other, and she died, and they had her in a body bag, and they carried her to the, the morgue where they put him back in there, you know, till, till everything. And that body bag, you know, they freeze them or make them cold where they won't uh, deteriorate. And they was getting her out to embalm her. And she was body bag trying to get out of that bag. They said, well, she ain't dead. And they opened that bag up. She crawled out of there, got her out of there, and she was just as much alive. There wasn't nothing wrong with it. And she said, I've just been to heaven. And, and I read her testimony. It was such a beautiful testimony that she went to heaven and how she described heaven is how I saw it. Did you believe that? Well, what, what, what in the world will, uh, would you not believe? Uh, you want to be a nitwit and believe nothing? <laughs> Man, ain't nobody going to tell a lie about something like that. Right. I was telling the story how the Lord healed me. And some old devil spoke said, I don't believe that. Another fellow said, man, he said, that, said he ain't going to tell a lie or anything that serious. <laughs> said, if you're going to lie, you ain't going to lie nothing about it like that. Said, you ain't going to lie on God. I mean, you know, lie, lie, but don't lie on God. And don't lie about God. You know, that's the truth. She wouldn't be telling a story. Like so any of the doctors verified it. I mean, the doctors verified it. And she'd been in there enough to die. If she wasn't dead, she'd have died in that thing because she'd been in there for a day or two and they went and pulled her out and she's trying to get out of there. And God told her to come back and tell her to, to tell folks about heaven. You know what all is going on in this world? Again and again and again all over the world. Things are happening right now that you wouldn't believe it though it be told you. God said our work works and nobody will believe it when it's been told. But we need that burden. There's souls out there. There's people out there. And if we could get this call in us. I heard it this morning. Deep. Deep. How many wants a deep call? Well, I ain't got time to, to finish this. But I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel a soul. I feel that something so beyond, so big, so beyond man something shocking and I'm telling you you God done told me don't you worry about what they're doing up yonder I don't care what they do God told me next night all these policies going to fail anything they get done it will fall to the ground because truth ain't with it and murder's behind it all this health care stuff they're trying to get in about half of it's going to be spent for boarding babies they're going to be paying $5,000 and more to have a doctor that will kill a baby out of it. So how can God prosper all this year? Everybody got health care, and, and everybody that don't want the pregnancy can do away with it easy. And then get doctored up. I'm going to tell you, it is a shame, an abomination what they're doing anyhow. As a pastor called me the other day, said, there's a lady go to my church, she got a daughter, that's had four kids. He said, every kid gets $3,000 a piece. He said, now here she is, $3,000 a piece a month. And said, now she's getting $12,000 a month and pregnant again. And it's being paid for by all this Medicare. So how's God going to prosper that kind of stuff? Ain't no kind of way. In the rest of the world, same way. We're fixing to have a Downfall this and the whole world freaking collapse. It's collapsing now. I mean you need to get in a business that ain't gonna quit. 
I'm trying to get you invest in a business that ain't going to stop. I'm trying to get you involved in soul winning. And soul winning is going to be right on up because the last thing God's going to do is save. He said, how can they say without a preacher? How can the preacher accept to be sent? He said, there's going to come a number that no man can number out of these last tribulations washed in the blood of the Lamb. And it's going to take this kind of gospel to get them washed in the blood of the Lamb. This charismatic gospel ain't going to wash them in the blood. This Baptist gospel ain't going to wash them in the blood. It's going to take the gospel of the healing of the sick, of casting out devils, hallelujah, the cleansing of the leprosy, and the raising of the dead to do it. Hallelujah. Oh, God. God, I'm worse. I'm, instead of getting better, Lord, I got worse off. Jesus, my soul pounds in me. Lord, I heard a, a, like a hammer inside of me, deep calling, calling for a revival, calling for a depth and a height and a length, calling for the gospel of the kingdom to come to us, calling, Lord, I've been hearing a voice, calling for Elijah. Oh, Lord, I heard a voice that Elijah, what ailed you? And I heard another voice coming out of my soul, crying back. I'm jealous for you, Jesus. They've cast your name out as evil. Lord, I know there's a ministry of restoration. Elijah shall come and restore all things, Lord. The church back to the foundation of the apostles. Back to the foundations of the prophets. Back to the evangelist, pastor, teacher. Oh, hallelujah. Glory back to the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Back to where Paul that wrote the great knowledge of these gifts of the Holy High. Yea, High. Kabalu, Hoya. God in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Wake us out of our slumber. Wake us out of our slumber. Wake us out of our deadness. Rejuvenate our bodies. Restore the vision. Rest, restore a vision. Without a vision we perish. God give us a vision. Give us a Holy Ghost. Vision. God give us a vision. Give my wife and I a vision God. Possess us. In the name of Jesus. And all that hear me. Oh, I'm telling you, I feel the Lord. Feel the Lord Jesus Christ. A day of trouble. A day of darkness. And gross darkness has come upon the earth. But light's coming. Light's coming. Light's coming. Light's coming. Go you, go you, go you. I can hear it. Go you, go you. Win souls. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory. You got money put up. Go get it. Burden. I mean, God is really putting a burden in us. Come on, stand on your feet. We're going to get ready and let you go here. Lord, we do thank you again. We thank you, Lord, for the word. And thank you for the stir. Lord, the revival spirit that you're bringing in our lives. And God, you're restoring us. You're getting us ready, Lord. You said for the biggest thing, Lord, that ever happened on this side of heaven. God, we're so thankful, Lord, that you're preparing us, Lord, for what you're about to do in these last days. And Lord, we humble ourselves. We submit our hearts, Lord, to this word today. We surrender our wills to you. God, we want it. Lord, we want to be under the burden, Lord, of soul winning. We want to be a part of this revival. God, we want to be in it, Lord. If we can't go, Lord, then we want to be able to sin. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for telling us today, Lord, that we can be a part of this move. And we ask you, God, to help us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to lay aside every weight, every sin, Lord, everything that do it so easily beset us, that would keep us, 
Lord, from being able to go. I know, Lord, you're raising up an army. You're raising up, Lord, a people that you can evangelize the world through. God, I believe some of those people are standing here. I don't, I don't have no doubt in my mind, God, that you're not having Brother Terrell here for a purpose to raise up an army, to raise up, Lord, some young men, women, handmaids, and servants, God, sending us all over the face of the earth, Lord. I've been to India. I've been to Africa. Lord, I've seen the need there, Lord. We've seen, Lord, how people are scraping just to get a meal. But, God, when the gospel come, Lord, the word alone illuminates their lives, Lord. It, it does the same thing to them that it do to us, Lord. It restores them. It put joy back in them. It put a fight in them. Lord, it, it just turned the world around, Lord. And, God, we know this, this kind of word is what, what India need. This kind of word is what Africa needs. And Lord, we pray today that you would let this burden be in our hearts. That when we leave this place, God, don't let us forget, Lord. Don't let us forget the image, Lord, that Brother Terrell was sharing with us about the lady with the rice and the little children picking the rice off the grounds, Lord. God, I've eyewitnessed little children eating rotten eggs, Lord. God, just for a meal. So, Lord, I pray you help us, Lord, to maintain this burden. Don't let us forget the things that we've heard, at least at any time they slip out of our hearts. God, we ask you today, Lord, to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our, our wastefulness. Forgive us, Lord, for, for being so caught up, Lord, and, and, and with the surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of life. God, we've wasted so much, Jesus. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Help us to be mindful, Lord. Let that voice speak to us. Let that voice speak behind our ear, Lord, that, Lord, when we can, we, we can put back $5, put back $20 or $100, Lord, just for soul winning. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. How many of you want the Lord to speak to you? Lift your hands. Lord, speak to me. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Jesus. Let me be mindful of my waste. Let me be mindful, Lord, of my surfeiting and my drunkenness. Let me be mindful, God. Lord, let this burden, Lord, just pound in my heart. Lord, let this burden pound in my soul. Let the deep in me reach out to the deep of God. And then let the deep of God reach down in my soul, Lord. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for a man of God and his wife that's standing up in these times. That's still going and opening these doors. We pray for them, Lord. We pray for their finances, Lord. God, I know, Lord, Brother, Brother Terrell have missionaries in India waiting for every dime, waiting, Lord, for, for help. Lord, the nurse of the, the orphanages in India, the, the little girls' homes, Lord, they're waiting, Lord, to get a, a, a pair of flip-flops. They're waiting to get God, Lord, some bread, Jesus. And, oh, Lord, we're asking you, God, to help us in America to get upon the burden, God. We saw all the babies in Africa, Lord, in the little, little orphanage home, standing around waiting, Lord, God, for just a meal. And, Lord, we didn't have no food to give them, God, but we shared it with them the word of God. They listened so attentively. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We ask you to help us. Help us, Lord. Help Brother Terrell. Help Sister Terrell. Help all the missionaries, Lord. God, that's going to Africa and India. Help your people, Jesus. Lord, help us to get this word out, Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would bless the givers with more, that they'll be able to give more. God, I know you got some men and women right here you can trust, Lord, in giving. You can trust with finances, God. Oh, God, I thank you right now. Lord, let me be one of those that you can trust, Jesus. Lord, let me be one of those, Lord, that can, that can give not only just uh, hundreds but thousands, Lord, Lord, to this ministry to help for soul winning. And God, we will forever be grateful to you. We will forever be thankful, God, when we reach that golden city, God, and we receive that reward, that, that, that soul winner's crown, God. Lord, we will be so ever thankful to you for it. All in Jesus' name, we love you and we appreciate you. Amen. Remember the service tonight.